Dear viewers, this is our Expert Speaks program of Tuesday. In this episode, we are going to discuss the various problems faced by the NRI community when it comes to question of NRI banking. This is NRI Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Khan, but your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Dear viewers, NRI community spread across globe have countless problems when it comes to question of banking in India. To address all these queries, I have brought to the studios a very eminent and distinguished faculty member, Mr. Balchandra Rao. Mr. Balchandra Rao is a banker par excellence, a person who was a former general manager of Canara Bank. He retired as general manager of Canara Bank when he was looking after this prestigious Mumbai circle. Mr. Balchandra Rao has a very extensive banking experience which runs for multi decades. He has worked in Dubai branch of Canara Bank. He has traveled across globe on various assignments. A person who has extensive experience of working in rural areas, urban areas, corporate banking, international banking, expertise in foreign exchange and everything that you can think of. A man who can speak very authoritatively on NRI banking issues. More than anything, a banker who has won the hearts and minds of his customers and the general public, a very affable person, always ready to help whenever his services are requested. Welcome to the show, Mr. Balchandra. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Balchandra, my audience of NRI community has lots of questions regarding the banking. Uh, many comes out of ignorance, negligence, they don't know, the bankers don't know the answer. So they have asked me a lot of questions through the comment section uh, of my videos. I have collated them, simplified them and grouped them under a few headings. I request you to kindly help the audience with proper answers on that. Okay. My first question to you is, when somebody gets a job abroad and he is about to leave to take up that assignment, he needs to open an NRE account. He doesn't know that he has to open an NRE account. What is the best system that he can follow? Go there and then apply for an NRE account or is there a way where he can open an NRE NRO account before he leaves India? If yes, what is the procedure to follow? See, the ideal uh, situation would be that he should open the account before he leaves India because uh, in that case, what would happen is he could complete the KYC formalities in the branch in India itself to the satisfaction of the banker, open a zero balance account, he will get the account number, he can move abroad and then out of his earnings from abroad, he can make a remittance to India and activate his account. This is the ideal method. As far as NRO account is concerned, he need not open a specific NRO account. His existing resident account, which is a savings bank account, will get designated as an NRO account. That is possible. So, I think you know, the ideal thing would be for him to open a zero balance account in India before he leaves because he can produce all his originals before the bank along with the self attested copies of the documents like passport, employment letter, he can give his photographs, his visa also is will be available on the passport stamp, visa stamp is available. So, I think it will be very convenient for the bank also to complete the KYC process correctly and efficiently. Right. One of the misconception that is there in the minds of an NRI is, I have got a resident bank account, the SB account. Of course, as per FEMA law, they can't continue this. They are ignorant about it. One of the reasons why an NRI refuses to convert this SB account into an NRO account is that I have some loans which are running. The EMIs are running on the SB account. I have got uh, some other things which are linked to SB account. Now, how they can smoothly transfer these EMIs or their liability commitment from these SB account into NRO? My question to you is when they convert from SB to NRO, will there be a seamless movement of the liability uh, uh, direct debits uh, from the NRO account or they have to redo the direct debits again? No, I do not think that would be necessary at all. See, the if suppose he has loans in India, I think in a, as per the FEMA also, 
he has to inform uh, the authorized dealer that is the bank that he is moving abroad and his residence uh, changes from resident to non resident so this is very important because the authorized dealer has to approve the continuation of the loan for a non resident okay this is very important earlier it is to be approved by the reserve bank of india now it can be done by the authorized dealer which is the bank which is the bank okay so once it is redesignated as an nro account automatically the emis can go from his nro account suppose the balance in the nro account is not there then he can give a standing instructions to the bank to debit from his nre account which from which for which he is going to send remittances that is also possible but if he has local income for example he has got a loan he has got a flat but he is letting out that flat when he goes and the rental income is going to come into his nro account obviously it has to come to nro account only so emi may be within the rent he is receiving so that need not be any reason why he should remit the emi from his nr e account right so it can continue seamlessly it can continue right so that doubt is hypothetical but that is not real your emi can run from your exactly. nro account and you also have an option that in case if you think that the amount is not there you can instruct Or the bank the to or the income in nro is insufficient, insufficient to meet the emi right then the monies which are there in the nre can also be used to pay this emi you yeah. can give the necessary or you can transfer some amount from nre to nro that's also that, yeah. possible yeah that's also possible right uh, my second question to you is now nris have got this nre nro accounts at the time of opening the account the bankers will ask them the kyc status make sure that they are going to be nris then they will permit them to be op- opening the nri nro account now is there an obligation on the part of nris to periodically update kyc data or uh, visa status or anything like that why i'm asking this question is nri accounts can be opened as eli- as per the eligibility of a famola the bank may or may not know his status somebody has to own up to that particular responsibility now bank will not know so what is the obligation on the part of the uh, the customer of the bank to update his records see the obligation on the is on the part of the customer only to inform his uh, residential status whether is a resident or a non resident suppose he has become a non resident he has to inform the bank he is becoming a non resident and he is opening his nre account and converting his local account into an nro account similarly when he comes back for good he has to inform the bank he has come back for permanent settlement and his accounts need to be redesignated as resident accounts now there may be occasions where an nri moves from one country to another at that time again he may have to inform the bank because there is a change of address mm. and other things and it may be required in order to comply with the uh, what you call uh, fatca fatca uh, requirements there he may have to inform the banks only in those cases he may have to inform the bank periodically if he is moving from one country to another country okay otherwise once he declares that he is a non resident he has to declare his change of status only when there is a change there are no periodically doesn't have to inform i am continuing to be an non resident i am continuing to be it's not required right but see there is one practical problem here there are people who come back fr- uh, from their nri stint come back and settle in resident and these guys have maintained the nre nro account for a n number of years and when when we ask them they said the bankers never told us that we it should be converted into nri uh, back to resident account so we are maintaining nobody questioned us no see if you have informed the bank that you have come back for permanent settlement the bank will definitely inform you to get the accounts redesignated as resident accounts but if you don't tell the bank that you have come back for permanent settlement how will the bank know that you have come back for permanent settlement see in that case what happens is if you continue this nre accounts you run the risk because if you are if it is detected let us say after 4 years or 5 years then what happens is that the income you have earned by way of interest on these nre accounts right from day 1 will be taxed in india and you may have to penal- pay penalty and also uh, interest for belated payment of taxes plus if you have remitted money something outside of india using that, these accounts it know, can it can land you into deep deep trouble yeah it can land you in deep deep trouble that is also possible but because now you know the liberalized system of remittances are there and residents can make remittances you know 
outside India for any purposes, including investments up to 1 million dollars. That may not be looked at that seriously, but if it is remitted for uh, purposes not covered under FEMA, then I think you know, it may be another area where he may land in trouble. So, is it fair to say in that case, it is the responsibility of an NRI? Yes. When he changes the status, whether he is a resident Indian, moved abroad, he is required to convert his SB account into NRI, NRO account. Likewise, inform the bank when you come back, inform them the change of status, get the required changes. The onus is on the customer and it is not on the banker. Yes. Any consequences that will follow is purely out of your imit uh, intimation to the bank. Yes. And the bank is not liable to guide you on that. Yes. In fact, the account opening form in many of the banks or by way of a separate declaration, the bank takes an undertaking from the customer that he will inform the change of status of his residence when such a change happens. So, the onus is on the customer only. Right. Okay. Uh, dear viewers, please make sure you watch this video till the end because I have listed a lot of questions which is of practical significance to your day to day banking requirements. Do not leave this video in between. We have collected a lot of issues raised by you and our banking uh, faculty today is going to answer all these questions for you. Uh, Mr. Balchandra, one of the practical uh, problems faced by the NRI community, see the NRI community comes from length and breadth of the country. Today you have uh, just not the NRI community only from Kerala or from coastal Karnataka. You go to Nepal or you go to um, Northeast or you go to any any part of India today, NRI community is quite a huge uh, community. When they walk into the branches of different banks in India, they do not get a gu proper guidance. Uh, the bank staff many a times do not even have the basic knowledge that is required to handle the uh, NRI customers. Do not the banking staff have an obligation to guide the NRI community? How does the banking industry seize this problem? Uh, you are right in one way because uh, it is not possible for the bank to train uh, because this is a very specialized area. It is not possible for the bank to train every single individual employee in all areas, specialized areas of banking. See, corporate credit is a specialized area, uh, foreign exchange is a specialized area, imports, exports, foreign trade is a specialized area. Now, if you start giving training to all employees in all these areas, see the receptivity would not be that good. See, you should give training to a person who is handling that job. Now, in, in order to ensure that you know the banks give proper advice, guidance to our NRI clients, what the banks have done is the banks have set up specialized NRI branches at all important centers in India. Every single important center where a large number of people have become NRIs. Kerala, particular, for example, Kerala. In Kerala, every nook and corner is a specialized NRI branch. Same is the case in Tamil Nadu also, certain districts in Tamil Nadu, where a huge uh, number of people, NRI, community. Yeah, NRI community is there. Similarly, in places like uh, Rajasthan, Bihar, there are some pockets where in a lot number, large number of people are NRIs from that area. See, these areas have been identified by the banks and most of the banks have got specialized NRI branches in these areas. Hmm. Besides having specialized NRI branches in all important cities, state capitals, metros, in sometimes in metros we have more than one specialized NRI branch because the city is so big, you cannot expect an NRI to travel from one corner to another. There are two or three specialized branches in some places, in some metros. Now, these staff which are the staff which are manning these NRI branches have been trained and they are well informed about all NRI matters and services. Specialized branch. It is a specialized, specialized branch. They are fully trained as far as NRI services and business is concerned. Now, these branches what they do is besides you know, mobilizing deposits and helping the customers, NRI customers to avail loans, for example, purchase of cars or construction of houses on which they guide, they also keep the NRIs informed or the various changes which are happening for the NRIs in either the RBI rules or in FEMA through periodical bulletins. And these are bulletins which are going to customers either by way of email or printed brochures to their addresses. Now, that covers the entire in a change of interest, change of interest, 
in the FCNR, NRA deposits. All that is communicated. So, they are purely attending to nothing but NRA works. Okay. They do not handle local business. Right. So, then is it fair for NRA community to look out for an NRA specialized branch of bank of their choice to open their accounts or if they have an account in some other branch of the bank where they are to request for a transfer of these accounts to NRA uh, banking branches? No. See, what I would suggest is that suppose you know, a person is from a remote area where there is only one bank. Okay. And in a uh, his family is let us say there, and he needs them to you know he needs to make some remittance to them for their livelihood. Now you cannot expect these people to move to the nearest and specialized NRI branch for drawing the funds and other things. Right. So what you can do is there is no bar on NRI maintaining any number of NRI accounts. Right. In his local village, he can open a small NRI account. Right. Where he keeps that account. Or he opens an NRO account in his name and jointly along with his wife, who is oh, a resident, right. which is permitted, hmm. with the authority for her to sign the checks, hmm. he can make remittances to that account right. and keep all his money which he wants for maybe investment in mutual funds or portfolio management in a specialized NRI branch where they will know these things and they will be able to handle his portfolio very efficiently. And see, the rules are very dynamic. They keep changing unless uh, they are notified on the yes. changing uh, landscape of uh, rules and regulations of the country. People will also not come to know. And yes. it makes sense for them to have it uh, their accounts in this specialized particular yes. branch. Because, you know, uh, once you know, it becomes a specialized subject, the intricacies are so many that you cannot expect every branch to know about these and handle them correctly. So, that is why it is always better to maintain your major accounts, your major NRA account in a bank which is a specialized branch and maintain maybe one or two accounts in a minor branch where you know you do not do much transaction other than use that money for your uh, needs, daily needs when you visit India or your family is in India and they require for their daily needs. Right. And one another thing I personally feel is. NRA community should actively look into the websites of the bank. See, every bank has a website. Yes. It has a specialized NRA corner, which where an authentic information is published over there, what they can do, what they cannot do. Uh, that can become a source of information for them. That is true, but what happens is, you see, a, a website, internet and all. See, this is possible for in a, NRIs who are uh, in the middle class and upper middle class or in a who are working in uh, bigger positions in various countries. But you know, the labor class is there. See, you cannot expect them to go through you know, internet and all that. So, what the banks do is generally, see banks have representative offices in many of the places. For example, let us say in Dubai or Sharjah, you know, bank has got representative offices. And these representative offices, they visit the uh, labor camps oh. and they uh, talk to them and tell them and many a times you know, in their local language, there are two, three people who know, you know maybe uh, the common language that Malayalam, Tamil, Kannada or you know maybe in you know, a Hindi, Bihari. Peer, people from north will generally know Hindi, people from Bihar, UP and all will know Hindi. So, you know they, they speak these languages, they go and explain to them about all these uh, schemes and other things and you know even remittances if they want to make, they go to the site. They collect the money, they give them the receipts and they see that remittances are made. Right. So, you know, lot of banks have that facility right. today and even there are lot of money changers also today in Dubai who do this job. Right. Okay. So, I think, you know, uh, website and other things is good and, uh, you know, you get lot of information, but you cannot expect every NRI to have access to such uh, Right. What? So, it is suffice to say probably that NRIs have to have a re-look at this, uh, see what banking industry is yes. doing, look look for specialized uh, branches to operate and update you on the uh, the current situation. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Balchandra, uh, this is a present day problem. There is a burning issue here. Uh, there are NRIs who are living abroad. They do not have an NRI NRO account for whatever the reason. Now, they have realized that they have to have an NRE, NRO account. 
they are just not allowed to open an NRE, NRO account when they are abroad. The banks are insisting on them to appear in the branch to open the NRE, NRO account. Is it fair? Are the branches doing the right thing or just the, is, is it a callous attitude on the part of the bank to say so? See, uh, banks uh, definitely would like to have as many NRE accounts as possible because it is a very good source of uh, deposits for them and they are hassle free accounts. So, there, there is no in intention of the bank to be troublesome or troublesome to any customer whether it is an NRI or otherwise. But then you know there are certain banking rules you know like for example, today KYC has become a very stringent rule as far as banks are concerned because a lot of frauds have happened you know where KYC norms have been violated, banks have not verified the KYC, not done the KYC requirement. So, reserve bank is also very very strict in this area. So, they conduct uh, periodical audits of branches uh, under banking regulation act to ensure whether KYC norms have been properly done and periodically renewed also. So, that being the case banks are a little bit skeptical about you know following some shortcuts. So, every bank has got their own rules. I would not say that this rule is correct, that rule is correct. But many banks what they do is they insist that if you are abroad and you want to open an NRE account, you can download the account opening form from the website and then what you could do is you could all the documents which are required, documents what are the documents required, passport, your visa, your employment letter, photographs, maybe your Aadhaar and PAN. If all these documents are duly attested by the local embassy or by any other legal authority there. For example, if we have notaries in India, you know in foreign countries, you know some countries they are notaries also. In some countries there are you know attorneys also. Uh, yeah, so they use so different yeah. terminology. They Somebody will it. say suitable certifier, yeah. notarized, legalized. Yeah, legalized, all that, you know, so many terminology. If that get it done and these are, you know, you upload them on the system and then mail the originals, the bank will be able to open the account. So, this is a little bit of uh, cumbersome, but nevertheless it is a requirement. Right. Some banks what they do is they say okay, you make a self attested copy and send it to us. They may open the account, but what they will do is they will not give you a check book. Mm. <laughs> so, the customer feels you know they, they may not have told them in advance that we will not give you a check book. So, you know the account is not activated actually. So, credits will come, debits are not possible. They will say when you come to India, you come along with the originals to the bank after we complete the KYC formalities. We will allow you, we will give you a checkbook and allow you to draw. So, you so you need an account, Yeah. but you cannot make it operational because the KYC is not done. You do not allow them to go anywhere but else. in any case, you know, it is for the bank or for the NRI branch or instead of simply refusing to open the account, educate them saying that this is the problem and you know get over it. So, an ideal situation would be that see I am going abroad, you know I know that I am going abroad, I got the employment letter. If I go to the bank and consult them in advance, they will open my account immediately. They will say you can open a zero balance account. There is no problem. We will give you an account number. Once you go there, you can make a remittance and activate the account. Right. So, that is the best and ideal way. But uh, of course, many people in their enthusiasm, they forget to do this and they go. But there are in you know, a representative offices in uh, various countries. You go to representative offices, they help you. You know, you can send an email to the branch. And that branch will tell the representative office to meet you and complete right. the formalities. In many right. cases, it happens. No, I see, for people who live in UAE, opening an account uh, in an Indian bank is is very very easy. Yes. And UAE has the highest number of NRI exactly. community, and most of the banks have got one or the other representative Gulf, branches. If you take Gulf, I it is very UAE. very easy. In the entire Gulf, yeah, it is very easy to open accounts in India and comply these formalities. Right. So, uh, uh, if you cannot open an account by visiting the branch, the next is go yes. to the embassy, go to the representative branch, that, uh, that route should be explored exactly. or in the next visit, 
keep some provision to walk into your branch and finish all these things and finish all these things and go exactly maybe before you come mail these documents let the bankers go through it if there is any, any shortcomings or anything they can inform you well ahead of time no, that's also see, is very simple the document requirements are very simple it is only your passport copy along with the visa stamping if the visa has not been issued so some countries issue the visa by way of a separate paper some people stamp it, stamp on, it the on the passport some people issue it on a separate paper later on it is stamped right so in it depends that copy then your employment letter if these are all these are only documents required nothing uh, you know right. your pan card is required because if you are opening an nro account then there will be a tds right so tds has to be remitted pan number is something like an account number in the income tax department right so whatever tds is directed in your account it has to go to that pan number only otherwise it will go into suspense and later on maybe it will be difficult for you to get a refund if you are a case for refund right yeah okay uh mr rao there are doubts in the minds of uh, a lot of nris i earn outside remit money to india can i remit only to my own nre and ro accounts or are there liberty to remit to any other account what consequences will follow what rules and regulations say what are the precautions that they have to keep it in mind can you briefly answer this question acha see nris can remit any uh, amounts to their own accounts there is no restriction on that then you know they can also remit money to their uh, relatives accounts by relatives i mean relatives who are defined as per the companies act if this is spouse suppose the spouse or children are residents in india only he is a non resident or spouse is staying in india because the children are studying in india then any amount of remittance sent by the husband to the wife or wife to the husband uh, for uh, by way of remittances into india absolutely there is no problem any amount can be remitted any amount remitted to any of the relatives also even by way of gift there is absolutely no problem absolutely no problem but if you are sending it to other than relatives like friends then the question is what is the purpose ah. so if it is a gift then there is a something called a gift tax now you will have to look at it from that angle so i think you know uh, if he is remitting in you know, to any other person and it is a form of a gift or whatever it is you know better he takes some professional advice you know what would be the no, tax right. implications of making such a remittance i think that would be ideal but moreover what he could also do is he could you know every inward remittance you get something called a foreign inward remittance certificate what FIRC. is FIRC now this FIRC is issued by the bank which actually receives the remittance from abroad and passes it on to the beneficiary right now he, the beneficiary has to make an application to the recipient bank to issue the FIRC for that there is an application form which uh, gives details as name and address of the remitter purpose for which it has been remitted other details are with the bank the pay order number dd number amount it mainly tells what is the purpose of exactly. transfer of yeah. this money yeah that gets authenticated tomorrow if it is questioned by income tax you can say this is the yes. fir say this yes. is yes. the that this is a proof yeah. it is not a gift or it is received with yes. a specific purpose that yes. is, it is received that can be proved exactly right so this firc is very important so so it is probably it is uh, to summarize yes you can remit money in any quantity to any account yes you are permitted yeah if you transfer it to your own family member your own account no questions will be asked over there but if you transfer it to somebody else there can be consequences you could be in the uh thinking that nobody will come to know about it but these days our it footprints are so strong your account information system yes, may capture yes. this It'll and without this. your knowledge even if you have forgotten the income tax department may serve you a notice asking this from where did this money come from exactly. what is the purpose exactly. so don't do not neglect don't uh, unnecessarily remit money in a haphazard manner and if you are in a doubt it is better you consult professional chartered accountants before you do that yes right exactly yes right uh mr balchandra uh one of the often asked questions or every nra has this question or every returning nra has this question i am coming back to india i have booked nra fds which will have maturity dates far into future 
than my date of return to India. What will happen to my NRFD? Should I close them and convert them into a resident FD? Or the same FDs at the booked interest rates can continue till the maturity date? I just have to redesignate them as resident FD. Can you uh, throw some light uh, into this questions asked by people? Yeah. See, in fact, uh, NRE FDs and uh, FCNR accounts, many of the NRIs have. So, when they come back for good, these deposits will not have matured. You know, they will have certain period to run before maturity. Now, the NRI has to inform the bank of the change of status and what he wants to do with these accounts. See, now suppose he wants to convert it into resident accounts at a later date, he has to mention that. Or in case he wants to convert it into RFC accounts, he has to mention in that letter. Now, what happens is he need not break the NREFD. NREFD will get redesignated as a resident uh, FD, but will continue up to the ostensible date at the same terms and conditions. Same is the case with FCNR, it will continue in foreign currency, same terms and conditions till ostensible due date. Hmm. On due date, Depending upon what is the wish of the customer, they will get converted as resident deposits or as RFCs. Right, right. So, what you meant to say here is you do not have to break the FDs. Yes. But converting them into from NRE status to resident FD status is a must. Yes, yes. yes. See, suppose you have a, a, a higher rate of interest FDs which are booked for a longer tenure. Yeah. Just because you came to India, you do not have to break and rebook it at a lower rate of interest. Yes. That need, need not be done. But you need to inform the bank, to get them converted or designate them as a resident FDs and the, they will uh, come under the applicable uh, taxation yes. of uh, India yes. at that point of time. But no, no, the tax implication will start from the date of return. Okay. So, interest earned from the date of return for that financial year, depending upon whether he is a resident, ordinarily resident or not ordinarily resident, yeah. it will depend upon whether that will be taxable. Right, right, right. So, that tax starts from the day of his return. Right. But Deposits can continue up to the ostensible due date on the same terms and conditions, except that they will be redesignated as resident, resident accounts yeah, resident in the books FDs. of the bank. Right. Okay. In the meantime, suppose I will tell, suppose even before the deposits mature, he again goes on an, another assignment abroad. Okay. He can change the status as non-resident again oh. for the same deposit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is also permitted. Yeah, yeah, because if he had given a letter saying that they, he wants to convert them into uh, RFC account. See, any RFC account also can be converted as a NRE account once he goes back. Ah, yeah. So, the same law applies here also. Right. Yeah, RFC accounts can be repatriated. Yes, so, yes. obviously, they can also be converted yeah, yeah, into yeah. an FCNR yes. or uh, NRE account as per his needs and we have, in case if he goes back uh, exactly. again back to working in some other country. Okay. Right. Uh, Mr. Rao, grievances are part of life and banking industry is full of them. Yeah. NRI community has countless of them. How is the grievance re uh, redressal mechanism works here? Will NRIs uh, have a scope to approach a banking ombudsman? Yes or no? If yes, give me the brief steps or when they can do it or when they cannot do it. See, uh, NRIs can approach the banking ombudsman. There is no restriction for NRS that they can't approach. But before approaching the uh, banking ombudsman, there are certain uh, procedures to be followed. For example, every bank has got a customer service section department. So, the customer or the NRI has to first lodge a complaint with the bank. And in the event the bank is not able to settle his complaint, redress his complaints to his satisfaction, or otherwise does not choose to reply him at all, okay. there is no response at all or rejects his claim, in such an event, he can approach the banking ombudsman. Okay. Now, banking ombudsman by itself is a very huge uh, subject. There are so many developments which have taken place after this banking ombudsman scheme has been introduced by Reserve Bank. Now, there is a new change from 22, which is uh, regarding centralized uh, uh, banking ombudsman scheme. Then in the in the meantime, in sometime in year 2012-2017, Reserve Bank came out with internal ombudsman for banks. So, there is an internal ombudsman concept. So, ombudsman concept by large is a very big subject by itself. So, if we dwell into that, it will 
it will it will be never ending you know what is the procedure right right but in short i would like to say that redressal through ombudsman banking ombudsman is possible for an nra customer it is possible but yes. you have to move in a step by step manner step by step so approach the bank and then take the um, incremental exactly. steps maybe whenever time permits i would like to do one another video on how to approach a banking ombudsman yes itself. fine right yes okay mr balchandrao thank you very much for your time you have answered all these questions and it helped my audience a lot probably periodically i request you to come on my channel and answer the queries that the nra community may have uh, when it comes to question of nra banking i forgot to mention that you are the past ombudsman of karnataka bank as internal well ombudsman. internal ombudsman of uh, karnataka bank as well uh, with your rich knowledge of the subject and your vast experience probably you are the right person to address all these uh, questions posed by the nra community we all remain in gratitude to you for your kindness to come over here and address all these questions that are there in my mind thank you very much thank you for inviting me and i hope i'll be able to you know articulate in a better manner and see that all my nri friends are uh, satisfied with the replies which i am doing to the best of my ability and uh, knowledge thank you very much dear viewers hope the video that i have done today with mr balchandra rao helped you to understand and get answers on the practical queries that you had on nri banking issues if it did help you to get right answers please like this video if you are a person who is watching my channel for the first time or if you are yet to subscribe for this channel please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon don't forget to share these videos with your friends and relatives thank you very much for watching this episode on nri money clinic i shall be back with you next tuesday with yet another expert with yet another burning issue which you might be looking out for an answer press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel